Greetings from D-Lab. This video is a follow-up to my Johnson Viking mobile power supply demonstration video that I did about a month ago. I built another one and now I'll probably offer it for sale. So we're going to go through how it's constructed and to tell you what you need to do to your mobile transmitter to use this power supply. My initial video featured this fine mobile power supply built in a vintage bud cabinet. Thing really worked out well so I thought well, what the heck let's make another one and here he is in a little bit more modern style cabinet has the same interface cable that goes to your Johnson Viking mobile but let me show you what you're gonna have to do to run my little fine creation all right step one of the modification on the rear of your Johnson mobile you've got these two connectors okay this one goes to the power supply and that is J5 you're gonna leave him alone he's good to go J6 on the other hand you need to add this jumper between pins 4 and 5 you see I soldered it on but I didn't have the mating connector if you have the connector put this jumper in your shorting plug popper on it now since my power supply has a built-in screen supply what you're gonna do is you've got these two resistors here it's R15 and R17 look at your schematic wire these guys in series and set them at 30k for the screen supply to the 807 then you're gonna see these electrolytics you probably got the old scabby ones in there that are leaking all over the place change them out throw in some 10 microfarads at 400 volts they'll do a great job because my screen supply in the power supply already has adequate filtering okay so we're on the third step and this one's just a slight bit more complicated than the first two okay right here we have switch three this is your function switch it's got two sections we're gonna work on the rear section switch 3 B rear you'll see this on your schematic down here way down in here okay you're gonna see three pins that's 10 11 and 12 first step you're going to go in here and remove the green wire from pin 11 and just discard that wire you're not going to use it right then if I can swing down here and show you there's a brown wire that's on pin 12 and you're going to move that over to pin 11 okay so 12 to 11 easy enough then you're going to go on pin 10 and you see this black wire right here going over to ground you're going to add a wire from pin 10 to chassis ground so let me explain to you why I did that so you're probably wondering why did I do those mods well what the purpose is is if you look at pin 6 on your schematic I'm trying to ground that pin when you go into the send mode with a function switch so if you squirrel around you see 6 goes over here to 4 and now it jumps to 5 and then it goes to that brown wire which I moved to pin 11 and then pin 10 is my ground so when you go to send BAM it grounds that pin grounds pin 6 keys up the relay in my power supply and you're transmitting so we went through the schematic and the reason why I did the mod so now let me show you this thing function alright I'm in push to talk mode with the old microphonium alright there's a switch on the back of my power supply that's in the up position for mic push to talk so now I'm talking okay if you look you can see the old meter bouncing a little bit there you can see the watt meter it's about 25 watts push to talk just like any other transmitter and the nice thing is is the mobile unit never had an output on the back for a TR switch well this power supply does there's a switched 120 volt little crystal socket that you can hook to your dial key Now let's do transmit mode using the front panel function switch, all right? So I'm going to put it over to receive, okay? I'm going to take the switch on the back of my power supply and go down for function switch transmitting, all right? Now, microphone doesn't do anything, okay? That's because the function switch is going to do that for us. 
boom. Okay, I'm in send. There's my wattage. There's my modulation. Back to receive, shuts off. It's a little bit different than what you'd expect from a Johnson Viking 2 where the switches are in parallel. There is no way to do that using the TR relay that's in the power supply. So let's do a little backside tour of the new power supply. I've got massive iron in this thing, all right? This power transformer, it's like five and a half inches tall. It's a pigoramus, all right? So we got that. Here's your rectum fire tube, a 5AR4. Right here is a swinging choke for the fluctuations in high voltage when you're modulating. This is your screen transformer. And then behind it is the ice cube relay. And I did mention this. I didn't show it though in the demo. Here is the crystal socket that you would connect your TR switch to. And here is the nifty little push to talk versus function switch selector on the back. Really nicely packaged in an old Regency police receiver cabinet. Another D Lab extraordinaire. Last thing I really need to cover with you is why did I build this power supply? Why didn't I grab a Heathkit or a Drake? Throw it on this thing, let her happen. Here's why. There is a warning in the manual for this mobile transmitter that says do not apply anything over 600 volts DC or you'll blow the crap out of this thing, all right? You're gonna get about 800 volts out of your Heathkit and I think probably about the same out of a Drake AC3, AC4 because they're driving a pair of 6146s, not a single 807. My power supply puts out 500 volts for the final and of course for the modulators and it also has a 300 volt supply that is separate for the screens and both of those are switched when you do your transmit receive function and they have to be because this transmitter is not like a regular Viking 2 where you have a keyer circuit turning on and off the VFO. It's not in this thing. So if you don't switch your screens, you're going to hear it in your receiver like all day long. All right, well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed my little uh, tutorial on the D-Lab Johnson Mobile Transmitter Power Supply. It's kind of hard to say. Anyway, if you get this thing, I'm not going to throw you to the lions, all right? The schematic will have all the documentation of what you need to do to make your mobile work with this power supply. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again.